Hello, my name is John Sveck. Welcome to this All24 video. Uh, coach Waterman and I are once again joined by uh, guest coach Tommy Dennison, who is the offensive coordinator at York University. Thanks for being with us one more time, coach. Yeah, really excited for this one, getting a chance to watch some film with you guys about, about how we run this play on, on game day. So it should be a lot of fun. Perfect. So we'll get right into the film here. And again, you can just direct me on what, uh, what you're seeing here, coach. Yeah, so we start off here, if you just want to pause it right at the top, We've got a true two on two to the field, right? And you can see it's a six man box. So we're gonna release our back to the field. And if that Sam chases him, um, we're gonna high low the Mac in behind him. But if the Sam gives up leverage and doesn't chase hard, we're just gonna immediately off one step, catch and throw to the, to the back in the flat. I think that's what happens on this one. Our two receivers on the outside are gonna, are gonna work outside releases. And, and we'll focus on that part of the play on this one. So if you wanna go ahead and play it, so if you pause it right now, you can see right now we've got a situation where the Mac or the Sam blitzed and forced the Mac to chase from the inside. So this couldn't have developed any better from us from, you know, getting the ball in our back's hands to the field side. So our number one and two receivers, as you can see, are both outside releasing at both the corner and the half have done exactly what we want them to do by turning their head and eyes to the receivers to take them away, which has created, a, you know, a ton of space for our running back in the flat right now. Looks like he's climbed about two to three yards, which, you know, it's pushing the envelope a little bit, but he's a little bit more of a receiver, this one, uh, than a true running back, so he gets away with this. On the backside, you can see that the over-under has materialized, but we're never going to get there. Clay, uh, the quarterback, is in a position to throw the ball right now off one step, and if you play it through, you'll see he, he does that. And if you pause it right on the catch, obviously it wasn't a great ball. Uh, he did put it on his body, so he didn't give him a chance to catch and run immediately. But you can see both receivers right now have, have done their job, forced the head and eyes. And we've got basically, even with not a great ball thrown, about seven space, yards of space in behind us before the nearest backer and about, I guess, 12 yards ahead of us to the nearest defensive back. So right now it's just about a player in space doing his job. So we feel really good about what we've got here. Now it's just about players being players. So that's, that's our job, get them into this position their job is to do more. And I think he does a pretty good job here, continuing to stretch it to the sidelines and get uh, you know, close to 17, 18 yards. If you, just, if you want to go to the tight here, we'll just, you know, obviously we went offside, but if you go to the tight, you can see here, we're just reading off 47. And you're going to notice that 47 blitzes and they try and chase with, uh, I think zero, uh, or even 38 tries to chase him from even, yeah. 38 tries to chase him the will from even further away. So we're in a really good situation. You can see it's just catch, rock, step, throw for the quarterback, get the ball into the flat, um, and let our players play. I think we've got about seven plays to work through here. So I won't spend too much on each play, uh, just because each play works a little element of the, the bigger part of the play. And the last one where we actually hit the over concept, you'll see everything come together. Perfect. So here's so the next one, Coach. A similar situation here where, again, 30 front again. We'd ideally like to run this to a 40 front, but – uh, again, we, we had some deficiencies up front that forced us. And even though this is a 30 front, you can see they're constant. Waterloo's, uh, you know, they're a very much an attacking defense that always is, is moving backers around to gain, you know, additional pressure points, is, is blitzing to bring four. Um, again, which causes, you know, in this case, zero to chase and give up leverage. So once again, he gives up leverage to our tailback. He's not aggressively pursuing him. So we're off one step, getting the back in the flat again, forcing people like, you know, is this the full part of the play? No, this is the screen part, so to speak, of the screen pass option. And what this really does for us is it frustrates a defense, right? Like, you know, a head coach is probably looking at a defensive coordinator right now saying, hey, can we just tackle this guy? Can we just cover him? Well, we want them to cover him because now we get to attack box with that high low that you can see being set up over the middle of the field right now. And obviously uh, our receiver got knocked off a little bit running the dig, but the shallow cross opened up as the backer blitzed and the other backer sank under the dig that, that knocked him down. So we're happy here. You can see again, right now, if you pause it, what a great job our number one and number two receivers did there, both outside releasing again, nobody triggers. So that number two receiver never had to wrap hard in behind it. So really, really good execution there by our players. And again, once you see the tight, you'll see how easy this is for the quarterback. If you're incorporating this in what you do, again, you know, it's, it's simple decisions for the quarterbacks to make. It provides complex questions for the defense to answer. 
and and again, uh, you know, we could we could support it with you know a week of install to get to to the point where we're really efficient at it. And here you see 83 pushing to the flat, clearly getting leverage on eight. Eight is not in a chase demeanor at all when this quarterback makes a decision. You can see he's he's still giving ground and just now starting to turn to run when that ball is coming out. So you know, again, good decision by the quarterback and much better throw, uh, which is why we got you know more yards after the catch here. I think we're you know we're we're close to 25 yards or something. All right, coach, on to the next play here. Why don't you, uh, you want to talk us through it? Yeah, so, so the next play again, we're still in this uh, 23 set. We're going to continue to be through the whole play. Again, we're getting a 30 front. You can see the Sam in this particular case brings pressure off the edge, which is again, fantastic for us. Uh, creates the three on two for us and we're just going to pitch and catch. So we relish pressure because it really puts the defense in a bind where now that they're either going to have to cover from further inside the Mac or in this case, the free safety, who's so deep that he's not going to be able to make a tackle until we get to 12 or 14 yards. So I think this is either the last one or the second last one where we're actually uh, pitching and catching to the back. Uh, but again, we're early in the game here, and we're able to continue to run this play uh, and have tremendous success just getting it to the back of the flat. We haven't even had to, to work to the next layer. Coach, can you talk a little bit about the spacing on the front side of that play in terms of your one and two receivers, one strong, two strong? Yeah, so you can notice here, that's, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, think, I think the question you're asking is why are they so wide? Um, so they're so wide because, again, we're trying to, to trigger them down to create a scene shot for ourselves. But if they don't trigger down, if they stay high, we've ensured that they can't become a factor in the play. So what we do is we widen as far as they'll widen with us. And then at that point, uh, we want to outside release them and wrap in behind. So our wide out though will also stay at two yards outside the bottom of the numbers. That's pretty standard for us when we're attacking the field. You won't see us uh, almost ever tighten our, our wide out beyond two yards. We really want to attack the full field. And it's not so much that we're attacking it. We want the defense to defend the whole field. And if they're not willing to defend it, obviously we're going to have a tremendous numerical matchup. We don't like attacking the field a whole lot. I mean, you see it here. But these are really easy pitches and catches. So for most part, we just want to, uh, you know, get the ball out quick. This is giving us the opportunity to do that. Um, and that's why we're attacking the field here. But really, what we're trying to do is get that Sam to peel out so we get a true box read. See it here from the tight. Get another good look at it. Yep. So again, you can see even though they're plus one in the box on us here, because this ball's gone on one step, you know, really the only danger we have is somebody getting their hands up to make a play. Um, you know, I'm not really comfortable that we left uh, the Mac linebacker coming through the, the A gap to the quarterback. But again, because he's coming from depth, I don't disagree with the O-line's decision. If he had walked down, what you would have seen was the Sam free off the edge. But because the Mac came from five yards depth and the Sam had come down earlier, our quarterback's eyes training, or our, sorry, I beg your pardon, our O-line eyes training ended up with that. The least threat was the Mac backer blitzing from depth from five yards. We knew that we'd get it out. So again, the biggest risk in this is just getting a ball knocked down. And throughout the course of the year, you know, we typically, no more than any other team, we get a couple balls knocked down. But, you know, it's, a, it's unavoidable to a point. All right, great. We'll move on to the next play here. So this one, I put in one more where we attack the back, uh, attack with the back, but this is the first time that you actually see how things start to develop. So if you pause it right now, once again, the Sam linebacker gives, is giving up leverage. If you just maybe two more steps, coach. Yeah, so right here, you can see the Sam's giving up leverage one more time. Um, now, the, the question is, at what point does this field half start to feel pressure from his coach to trigger, right? Hey, you know, stand, you know widen out stare through that number two defender, through to the quarterback, through to the number three defender, and trigger down. So if you play it maybe two more steps, coach, you can see right now the quarterback's made his decision and we're throwing to the back in the flat. And no matter that this number two defender uh, triggers and he's going to trigger, he's too late. Not too late to make a tackle, but too late to make a play on the ball that's going to disrupt the play. Play it, though. And if you can pause it right now, there's the trigger. Do you see for the first time now you see the half acting differently. So we've actually affected change. And this is, this is communication that we look from, from our booth to explain to me what we're seeing. 
And, and you notice if you go back maybe a few steps, our number two receiver for the first time has also acted differently. So there's the outside release and there's the wrap that you see right in behind him. So if, if you could just highlight, coach, if you just put your mouse overneath, over the number two receiver for the, yeah, exactly. You could see he's triggering in behind. So if this had actually happened a step earlier, that trigger, you could see we would have a wide open throw down the seam. Would we have scored? Probably not because that free is coming over the ball, but we would have gotten, you know, 20 to 25 yards and had a chance to make a free safety miss he probably would have been five to six yards away at the catch point from us. So this is the first time that we've seen some different behavior from the field defenders. And we're not going to go any further with this because uh, they didn't actually do that. And like, they didn't give up a seam uh, against us in this game. But it was really important for me to show what that would look like and what active eyes look like. And we don't want to get into a guessing game. So I'm really proud of Clay that he didn't get into a guessing game here. He just stayed true to his read. He read through the half. He didn't anticipate something that wasn't there. He just read, and then he threw. And that was, that's what gave us this. And if you play it out now, you'll see, once again, we've got our, our, our running back, or was a receiver, in the flat trying to make you know, uh, a half, rolling downhill aggressively at about four yards depth, the chance to miss. He makes a miss, and we've got an easy first down again. Maybe not so easy for him. He'd probably argue that there was a lot of work that went into this. But for, for, for the most part, you know, we've really forced teams to tackle. And that's what we want to challenge. We want to challenge defensive backs to tackle all the time. Great. Here we are on to the next one here, Coach. So for the first time here, we get a different look. We finally, you know, we get a defense that says we're no longer going to give up that back in the flat. There's just, it's, we've seen it too many times. So, you know, they've, if you pause it right now, Coach, They've, they've probably had a few coaching, uh, you know, uh, player meetings on the sidelines where they've talked about this specific play. I can tell you we ran this play 14 times in this game. Um, so out of this formation. So as we, as, we, as we push the flat here, if you go one more step, as the quarterback's caught it, and he's, you can see now the demeanor of that Sam linebacker has completely changed. He's in full chase. His shoulders have turned, and he's running. And even though we still have leverage on him, we know that as that ball goes in the air and he's in full chase, he's going to make a tackle for two to three yards. And it's not worth the risk of the ball being in the air that long. Uh, again, you see our number one and number two receivers, though. They don't know that that's happening. So they're still attacking the number one and number two defenders the exact same way, attacking outside leverage. If you look to the boundary now, you've seen that the number two and number three have worked their spike release. So number three has, has gone first and he's, he's climbed. And the number two is released right off of his hip. And he's coming underneath it. And he's going to climb to about four yards. So what's happened is we're, we've read the Sam. We've gotten off of him. The quarterback's done his gun in one. Now the quarterback's going to reset his feet. And he's going to high-low the next defender, who's the Mac, number 38. So you could see as it's already developing, 38 is sinking to get underneath our Y, our number three receiver on the dig. And that's giving us the opportunity to throw to the number two receiver on that shallow cross. So what we've done is we've taken the, the screen option off the SAM, we've canceled that out, and now we've immediately reset our eyes to the next defender, the, the, the Mac backer, number 38, and we're high-lowing him with a two-on-one uh, decision off of 38. So if you play another couple steps here, you see 38 fully commits to the dig, which has opened up that shallow cross to us. I would like to see our shallow cross another two yards deep. Uh, he cheated, he came underneath a little bit, and he didn't climb, which, you know, could allow that Sam backer to get back into the play. We really, really want to focus. So that would be a correctable uh, thing that we would teach. So watching here, you see the Sam is, has uh, expanded, which you can see if you just, maybe just two steps back, coach. Yeah, you can see we, Clay's eyes go directly out there, and now he's high-low off 38. You can see his eyes are right on 38 right now, and his 38 sinks under number 81. We've got the shallow cross coming underneath. Clay's just looking for a you know, window to throw it, and he takes that first opportunity to get that ball in his hands. And this is what we talk about now. This is a box attack play. So here they are. They're deficient in the box. You know, they've brought that extra defender uh, on a blitz, and we've got a situation right now where there is one defender in the box to defend two players going high-low. So for us, this is, this is to us just like a run. You know, when we factor out all of the yards that we're going to get over all the plays, you know, people could say, well, you, you know, runs don't have incompletions. No, but they absolutely have zero and negative yardage plays. You can get tackled for a loss on, on a run. 
Um, this, we could get an incompletion, but this is gonna be pretty rare that this throw doesn't get completed. So we feel good about it. Yeah, so this is just showing that in one game, we've basically got to almost every single option on the play. Um, so again, we're gonna read off the edge defender right now because they're all walked down. We'll treat him like the Sam. Uh, and he is the Sam in this case, I think it's 37. And you can see he's turned his shoulders immediately to run. So Clay is off of him. And now he finds the next defender who's 47 and we're high lowing 47. So this was basically the end of this play for us in this game. Uh, I think we may have ran it one more time because here for the first time they've decided they're only gonna rush three. We're reading off 37, he's passed on. We're now off the next defender. I think we said that that was 47. You can see as he comes through, he's jumped down on the shallow cross, okay? Which has told our quarterback to throw in behind his head on the deep dig. So one coachable, one teachable point here. Uh, and if you go back to that drill where we had the straight line where the, where the receiver sits soft, okay? What we don't do a very good job of here, uh, and Nolan, fantastic receiver, uh, you know, we second team all conference, had a, uh, you know, was, was second in the, uh, the country and receiving. He was fantastic. This was an opportunity for him and he corrected it. Uh, you can see right now he is drifting. So he is not coming down that line aggressively. He is drifting to the free safety. And we get away with it because if that free had been a little bit more active or early coming downhill, that ball probably gets knocked out. Clay does a really good job of throwing this on his body. But Nolan could have done a better job here of coming flat, like that drill that we run, which would have allowed him and put more pressure on that free safety to make a tackle. And it may have given him an opportunity to score or certainly turn up field and put more stress on the boundary half, or sorry, the field half and the field corner to make a tackle. So again, from the tight, we're off 37. You can see he had disappears. Again, if you could just go back, coach, because it's, it's a really great picture um, right at the edge of the screen here. If you one step from here, you can see right there, he, he is completely in chase mode. And you can see Six's eyes are directly on him right now. So he can see he's turned and run. And you'll see Six eyes now refocus to the next defender, which is 47. And as he comes back underneath, he finds the high low right now. And he throws to the, deep, the dig as 47 attacks downhill. Again, now it's sitting soft between zero and 47 for 81. And as long as we don't drift here, we probably get some yards after catch. Clay does a great job. You see the sticking that throw on his body, anticipating the free safety. So there's a high probability Clay would have been talking to the receiver after this play and explaining why he threw this on his body and what he could have done better to try and get us in the end zone. Because you know, you know, coaches, as you guys know, like, and, and I think this is one of those drives where, you know, we got down to the three yard line and we, we settled, uh, I, I can't remember if we got no points or we had a field goal, but again, these are the little things that if he's able to, you know, get to the edge, turn it up field, we get six, and we never know what's going to happen when we get inside the 10-yard line, right? So little things like that all make all the difference. So we focus on a focused approach, not running a lot of plays, running, you know, the plays that we run, doing them really well, focusing on coaching and teaching, attacking with a numeric advantage, and making sure that as we go forward, you know, our players are empowered to make quality decisions that that, that, that allow them to achieve more success.